Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to continue talking about chapter 4, ionic compounds. So if you remember last chapter, we talked about ions and how they form and what kinds of ions there are. There are some monatomic ions and there are polyatomic ions, which hopefully you've memorized because that'll help you a lot with the AP exam. Well, now we're going to talk about these ions and how they work in equations. So let's get started. For review, ionic compounds are formed when cations attract anions because of their opposing charges. So, sodium loses an electron and becomes Na+, chlorine gains an electron and becomes Cl-, and this plus charge and this minus charge attract each other, and they become a salt, they become an ionic compound, and there's a crystal lattice formed where you have chlorine, sodium, chlorine, sodium, and it becomes this big molecule, this big crystal of positive and negative charge. Similarly, a calcium is going to lose two electrons and become calcium 2 plus. And here's another example of, a, of an, an anion. CO3 is going to have a, a negative charge of 3. So basically, all you need to know is that positive and negative attract each other. And this is how ionic compounds are formed. So, in an ionic formula, positive charge must equal negative charge. So this makes sense in math and science and pretty much every other uh, scientific discipline, if you have an equal sign, you want the thing on one side to equal the thing on the other side. So it's the same thing with charge. Charge has to balance itself out. It has to be neutral for it to be stable. So here we have Na with a positive charge of 1 and an F with a negative charge of 1. So the positive 1 and the negative 1 neutralize each other and you get NaF. But for this one here, calcium 2 plus, you have a 2 plus sign on the calcium and chlorine only gains one electron. It's just chlorine minus one. So how do you equalize these charges? You just add a coefficient of two in front of chlorine. So you get CaCl2. So you have one atom of calcium with a two plus charge and two atoms of chlorine with a minus one charge on each for a total of CaCl2 where the charges are balanced. Same thing for magnesium and oxygen. Magnesium has a 2 plus, oxygen has a 2 minus, so they're even, so you can just put them together as Mg and 0. And then here for aluminum, this one's a little bit more complicated. We have aluminum with a charge of 3 plus and SO4 with a charge of 2 minus. So to make sure that these charges are equal, we have to add a coefficient of 2 and a coefficient of 3. So here we have 2 times 3 is plus 6 in total, and here we have 3 times 2, which is minus 6 in total, and the plus 6 and the minus 6 even out and they neutralize, and you have Al2SO4-3. So this 2 for aluminum comes from this coefficient, and this 3 comes from this coefficient here. So you just want to make sure that the charge of positive is equal to the charge of negative. These are all ionic formulas. So, naming ionic compounds. We just talked about all of these ionic formulas. How do we give them names? How do we speak about them? How do we write about them? What do we call them? So ionic compounds contain a metal and a nonmetal. And in our case, NH4 plus is considered a metal, and polyatomic ions are considered nonmetals. So NH4 is the only positive polyatomic ions. If you've memorized all your polyatomic ions, you'll know that all of them are negative, except for ammonium, which is positive. So ammonium is considered a metal, and all of the other polyatomic atoms are considered nonmetals. So how do we create these names? How do we name these formulas? Names are created by giving the name of the cation first,